Um, let's get into the sections. What are the different kinds of things that you can insure on short-term insurance and that you should insure and what you need to look out for? Lawrence, there, there are a lot of different sections under short-term insurance, but I feel we should focus on, on the main five, which most people will either need to insure or already have insured on their policies. Those five being your household contents, your all risk cover, your building or homeowner's insurance, your vehicle, and then the various liability sections. There's a lot of content to discuss under each of these sections. Mm. And like you pointed out, I think we should we should see how far we get today and maybe continue this conversation at, at a little later stage. So let's start off household contents. First off, what is household contents? House, the easiest way to understand household contents is everything you take with you the day that you move. Mm. If you can, if you are able to lift up the building, turn it upside down, everything that falls out, that is household contents. Yes. Now, guys, I know that's why I gave the two examples. Some people, when they move, take the light switches and the light sockets, <laughs> especially if they are tenants. <laughs> That's not your household contents. Take the geezer with. <laughs> yes, unfortunately. Yeah. It's horse growing up in a mining community. <laughs> but in any case, so household contents. Everything you take with you the day that you move. Now, we have to tie this back to what we mentioned earlier. Especially average and new for old. Remember, the question we need to ask ourselves is, what is it going to cost me to replace everything in my house yes. in the event of a total loss total loss being defined as the house burning it down the house washing away the house being swallowed by the earth in the event of an earthquake yeah yeah and this is something that that people need to to really get their heads around so i want to i want to um reiterate that it is everything not the big things, not the furniture, not the electronics. It is everything, even your underwear that you wear for your husband, there at the back of your um, the shelf that's hidden away from everybody. That's part of everything. You need to look at everything in your house needs to be valued and insured. That is so true, Lawrence. And, you know, it, it's very, very hard to... People always ask, so what do you think I should insure my household contents for? I don't know. I don't stay in your house and I'm not going to, to scratch through your drawers to to see what's hidden there. Mm. But here's a couple of practical guidelines. The average woman's closet is worth around 80,000 Rand. The average men's closet worth around about 60,000. Yes, I would have guessed like 20. <laughs> Because uh, women is like four <laughs> times more expensive. But okay. the, the modern man, Lawrence, <laughs> yeah, the, the modern, modern man. Yeah. Average kids, we're talking about up until about teenagers, with around 40,000. So if you are a household of mom, dad, and two kids, we're l already looking at almost 200,000 rands worth of household contents yeah. just, just in so clothes. Mm. Then we haven't gotten to the high-end electronics. We haven't... We haven't gotten to the, the cutlery and crockery. Mm. Again, looking on at averages on those things, we're looking cutlery, crocker, crockery, linen, all of those things, on average 75 to 100,000. Now, guys, I know this all of a sudden starts adding up, but again, we're referring to on average for a middle class household. Mm. And that doesn't include the, the, the clothing, doesn't include all the uh, jewelry. As Definitely. Well. So that is also have to be added. And again, modern man, there's more and more watches. There's more and more these kind of things that that men wear mm. that that you have to add onto it as well. It, it it really ramps up. And and guys, it's so easy to blame the insurance companies for um, um, implementing average, and they don't want to pay us out. To be a hundred percent honest. I think that most of the times the insurance companies are extremely lenient when it comes to average. They and are. if they really wanted to, 
I would say more than 90% of claims, they would have been able to implement average on their claims if they really, really wanted to. Uh, because I, I think there's very, very few people that are actually uh, correctly insured on their household goods. Like you say, Lawrence, and it unfortunately results in this vicious circle, not just with household contents insurance, with all insurance, but very specifically with household contents insurance, where as soon as people have a claim, they, they have a burglary. Mm. The the TV and the toaster and the high fire was stolen. People still have high fires? Um, but in any case, sound the system. sound system yeah. was stolen. So, when they have this claim, they know, according to them, the insurance company is going to try and pay out less. So, what do they do? They inflate the claim. All of a sudden, um, oh, no, 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 but I had a bigger TV. I had a better sound system. Oh, it's not just the toaster, it's also the kettle that was stolen mm. and the microwave. So now the claim is inflated. Because of this, there's an excess. Yeah. That's the reason we have excesses when people claim. That is the reason why there's average to be applied. Because the insurance company realizes that people are inflating claims and claiming for things they don't even have. Yeah. So somewhere they need to recoup money. They need to minimize their own losses. We have to remember, an insurance company is still a business. It's still in the business of making money for its shareholders. Yes, by being correctly insured, you can minimize your financial loss. By planning correctly, you can minimize your financial loss. Because the idea behind insurance is always to place you as near as to the situation you were before the actual loss. So understand it, again it gets down to having a, a proper financial advisor. It's fine under, under insuring your household contents, but understand the implications. Mm. Again, then yeah. know that, listen, if I have a complete loss, they're only going to pay out the insured amount and I'll have to replace everything in my house with that. Or if I have a loss, a burglary, a small little fire, they are only going to pay out a portion of my claim. Mm. And if you're fine with that, if you've got a reserve account, if you are able to, to take that financial blow, then yes, by all means. But it, it all comes down to understanding what you're insuring, what you're paying for, and what is the actual impact when you claim yes yes yeah it is it's so so important i've got a quick question here um, is my garden furniture on my patio and all the tools in my my garage shed insured under my household contents it is short answer yeah is it something you are going to take with you the day that you move yeah. that you leave mm. yes it is so it's it's also insured sure. a, a couple of things under household contents we, we have, or a few people realize. So your household contents is not just the things in your house. It is also your lawnmower. Um, it is also your patio furniture. It's also, a lot of times, things you take with you on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm. Or not necessarily a day-to-day -day basis, because- Every now and again. Every now and again. Because your jewelry could be covered under household contents. Your clothes when you go on vacation could be covered under household contents. If you go and visit your friends and you take your PlayStation along, it could be covered under household contents because there's a section that details specifically contents temporarily outside of the home. So basically household contents, everything in your yard that you take with you the day that you leave. leave yeah. Yeah. So home meaning everything where you stay, basically, Correct. garage, everything. And again, that comes back to how much um, you have to insure your house for. Because we've gone through these values very quickly. And then we take people's um, these tools, mm. spanners, um, screwdrivers, all of those kind of things. It, it, it actually becomes almost ridiculous. And, and that's why you rightly pointed out, Lawrence, as well, that if an insurance company really, really, really wanted... To apply average, they can seriously pay out only fractions of claims. Yeah. Because rarely, if ever, would a assessor go into the garage and look at the tools and take the patio furniture into account. Yeah. And they generally just have a quick little look around and 
from there extrapolate. Yeah, get an estimate. They will never, or very seldom would they come and do a full uh, inventory to make sure that the values are when you have a claim. Uh, But they have the experience to walk in, look at the lifestyle and, and have an idea of how much the goods should be. That's so very true. And a lot of times people think assessors are idiots and out to screw them. No, they are not. An assessor serves two purposes. Number one, making certain that you are recom- recom- ah, paid out. Mm-hmm. That was a difficult one. Yeah, yeah. Paid out <laughs> for what you're actually claiming for. But also, secondly, that the insurance company is actually only paying out for things that are insured. Yeah. Guys, this brings us back on to my last point concerning cashbacks. And I think that the last word on the show. Insurance companies are not stupid. Mm. They've got some very, very, very smart people sitting there. That is why they keep on changing products. That's why they bring out innovative new paybacks and ways of structuring it. Because they know, and they've got the data, to know how many people are going to be claiming for a certain event. Mm. In the old days, you even had varying um, insurance premiums for different color cars. Because they did a study and various studies to say that, oh, this color car is in more accidents than other color color cars. Mm. So those people are called actuaries. And if you really want to hate somebody, hate actuaries. They are the guys who determine premiums. They are the guys who say, oh, we can afford to do a cashback payment because, again, on average, 86% of people claim within five years of taking out insurance. Yeah. Here goes your cashback bonus. Yeah. And here's the thing with um, with uh, what clients, and it is unfortunately, we think these things won't happen. And then when it happens, we don't get what we expect we were going to get. And then it's always somebody else's fault. But this is something that people need to keep in mind is there are certain exclusions on your policy. There are certain excesses. It's all to minimize the risk of the insurance company so that they can keep premiums affordable. So now what happens is a person puts in a claim, they have an excess or they um, have a certain exclusion. So some of the claim aren't paid out or whatever the case may be, then they're upset. I pay my premiums. The insurance company always looks for an excuse not to pay my, my claim. What people need to keep in mind is if the insurance company had to insure all of that risk, the premium would have been dramatically more expensive, which means that same client would probably not have taken out that insurance in the first place, Mm -hmm. which means he wouldn't have had a claim at all. Now, at least he has a claim because it was affordable enough. So there's a fine line between insurance companies having to pay out everything and premiums having to be affordable. Um, And it comes down to what happened with medical aids. In the 80s, they had medical aids that covered everything. It was um, all the medical aids with this old traditional medical aids. Then the government came and said, but not enough people have access to medical aids because they underwrite people that are sick. They penalize people that are older, etc., mm. etc." Et so take all of that away because we can't discriminate against people because of their age and because of their illnesses and whatever. So what happened is in, uh, medical aids had to become much more expensive and now less people have access to private medical aid than they had in the 80s. So it's a very fine line. You can't uh, play around with it and, and not have a, a ripple effect of it. That's very, very true. Lawrence, if, if we continue this conversation, uh, we're going to be here till, till tomorrow. <laughs> I think we, we've covered household contents to a large extent. Um, guys, again, please feel free to contact me, to contact the Retire Rich and Happy Officers, and we will gladly assist you. Yeah. Final word from my side, it's not about what you in, what you insure. It's about understanding what you're insuring. Yeah, that is, that is um, if you look at our, our um, slogan in our business, it is from hope to certainty. Because even with short-term insurance, there's way too much hope happening. People hope that if something happens, the insurance company will pay them out. Rather understand what you are covered for and what you are not covered for so that you can have the certainty that if something happens, oh, this is going to be my excess. Don't address it when it actually happened and then you're in trouble. Mm. 
Hey guys, Lawrence here. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it informative and you got some uh, benefit out of it. Uh, please add in the comments any questions you might have or any other topics that you would like me to talk about. Uh, please subscribe to our channel, hit the bell button so that you can get notified of any new videos that we post so you don't miss anything. Thanks guys. See you around.